Seven o'clock, I'd like to open the Charlton Planning Board meeting for March 2nd, 2022. First up, we have a discussion with East End LLC for a proposed zoning change from village district to community business on L. Stevens Road. And we all have a nice color code map in front of us. Yeah, I did a blow off of the area in question. So, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, one discussion about possible zoning change on L. Stevens Road. So right now that parcel is zoned partially CB and partially agriculture. That's where the orange and the white is, correct? Yeah. To reference on our map. Mm -hmm. and we'll so they, see the intersection. It's right yeah. at the intersection of L. Stevens Road and yep. Route 20. So it's yep. this way. And uh 40 is across the street. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's right there. Yep. yep. So that the A zone is kind of messed up a little bit because the the village goes all the way up to Route 20 from North Main Street as part of the Miller property. Yep. And when that goes, when that got changed from A to Village, the remaining portion of my property now remained A, and it does it doesn't conform. Mm -hmm. So I'd actually like to change it to Village. Um, I have a different form that shows a little bit different. Okay. So this is Route 20 in L. Stevens Road. You see the house that's existing, the yep. CB line goes right through it. <laughs> and this portion right here is A, and it doesn't conform to the A zone mm -hmm. because of when they did CB, they didn't, they went back like 400 feet from yeah. 20, they didn't go full property lines. Right. We found so, that out. <laughs> yeah, it's the same problem as on the eastern side of yeah. town. I, I mean, there's, I have a few more things I could point out, but we'll yeah. just do one yeah, we'll that. So, what you're looking to do is change the aid of village? The portion of aid of village, yes. Because okay. okay. if possible, I'd like to be able to get, there's enough frontage there to get two lots out of it, yep. two A and R lots, if it gets changed to village, and just do a couple of like starter homes. Yep. And then keep the frontage on Route 20, so commercial, and see what we can get to go in there. I mean, I, I know we're planning to work on our map changes in the fall, but this is actually one of the types of changes that we want to do. So right. we didn't get it. Yeah. On the spring, you know, annual meeting, it just, you know, it's ahead of the game, but this is one of the classic this is examples example, of some right. of the zoning problems we have. So the large <laughs> and the large parcel next to it is already village. So it's not like you can put village out there on an island. Correct. There's already village zoned next to it. Yeah, that whole side mm -hmm. of the road. So, so I guess my question is, if, if you're in favor of this, do I need to have my engineer draw anything up to do that type of zone change? You no, know, what we do in a case like this for town meeting, all we do is like a before and after. Okay. So if you, all the ag parts is going to turn to village, we have this before. Yeah. And then we have it, you know, the after with salt blue of the purple for a village but some of those ag parts are individual homes as well there's one yes. two, th so there's, five, well, yeah. there's, there's you, five houses you reference the map lot block don't you randy yeah I, I represent all the properties that are where okay. the zone change is being affected do you own that whole property which oh, the, the that whole agricultural property or? no if you oh, look okay. at the map you'll see there's on on the okay. front so that's what i was saying there, there's five other homes there that stayed at, in the a zone okay. This is the yeah. Yeah. okay they don't really conform either but they're pre-existing they've been there since before zoning mm -hmm. so if you build a house there you're going to have to conform with the zone yeah i am there's another one. So you got a section here. It's a double-edged sword. When you get to your zoning discussion, yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll talk. Do a couple of talking points up there. But yeah, it makes sense. I mean, seventy-five this frontage, twenty thousand square feet. There's if water available, it, so it can make it work. Me to get it, yeah. that's what again, they're just going to be on the smaller yeah. side, yeah. starter yeah. homes. Yeah. Really, that concern is the setback. You know, I think there's a, a need for a village town. district. If I, they I, want to have the whole thing on the right one. Right 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 comes up on the left hand side. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to get low with that. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that fit in there pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Are you looking to have all the properties that are in the agriculture zone? Or just the properties that are uh, just the ones that in you have control of. The property you have control of. Um, so you just have to mark out which are properties. Which map lot and block? Okay. 
So, 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 that we, would, so that's we have like, to reference it for you know the article for the that's going to landlock yeah. those four houses as a or do you i don't my brother owns one of those i don't know if he'd be interested in having it rezoned to to village i don't know i haven't talked to the other property owners i mean it would be cleaner if to just redo that whole section and get it out of it because they don't they're like they're a hundred feet of road frontage there so they definitely mm -hmm. don't conform yeah, they, they're actually better off if it was changed for them yes. you know but I don't want to speak for them. I, I don't right. know if you want me to knock on doors and ask them if they're interested. Uh, I'm not sure they even care. So you, to the, we approach them with, a, with that question? Or? Well, it, it'd be nice just to do it all, make it cleaner. But if we don't want to, then, you know, but if, if we at least ask the question and then if they say no, then it is what it is. It's not really going to affect them in any way. Well, sure, it would allow them to it would open up any use under village. Yeah, it would actually positively yeah. affect them because yeah. right yeah. now they have to conform to setbacks in the A zone on our, okay. you know, what's considered oh. a time. It's not going to hurt the rest of the neighborhood. It's, you know, it's all like anyway, anyway, so almost impossible to add yeah. on, put up a shed or anything, you know, because they just don't have the land for it. Yeah. Would allow, allow them to do mixed use, to run a, easier to run a home office out of it or do a mixed yeah. use there. Yeah, actually provide more, more opportunities if they okay. use it. I don't see a problem with that. If you want to go and approach those other property owners, if they're interested in switching, sure. by all means. Okay, go right ahead. In the essence of time, because yeah. time is a wasting, because yeah. <laughs> the town meeting, um, I would shoot to have you on the April 6th planning board agenda for the public hearing for that. I okay. think it's going to be. You know, a two minute meeting, but still, oh, we have to do the public hearing yeah. part of it to get it to the selectmen so that we can have it. I've already done it as a placeholder on the warrant. Okay. This this property and another one. So right. they're already held as placeholders. So um, but I would show them for the public hearing for April 6th. That'd be the soon as I can get. Are they required to be notified? The voters. Yeah. Public hearing, yes. Excellent. Thank you for your time. Right. Thank you. The public hearing would have to be by one by next week, by, by the next meeting. April. First no, April. April. We can do it. We can actually do it very close to the town meeting, but I'm shooting to April 6th, which is we'll discuss it later. But I'll be having a public hearing for the bylaws that night, too. So. All right. Great. All right, next up, we have a continued public hearing for Edward Services LLC site plan application fuel station convenience store 16 Servage Road. And the applicant has requested it continues to April 6th. And uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be heard on April 6th because the DEA is cutting it close, just put it that way, as far as DEA is going to hear and make a decision. It's appealing the zone. Officer's decision on whether that can't be able to set back or not. Gotcha. All right, we have a motion to uh, continue the public hearing for Edward Services LLC till April 6th. So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Bill? Bill Fontaine, aye. All right, all right, next up, we have a zoning bylaw diagnostic review with uh, CMRPC planner, Gabe Trevor. Gabe, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing well. How is everyone? Didn't keep you waiting thank tonight. You. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, Randy, were you able to print out what I sent you? Distributed to all the board members, so everybody has. Okay, a great. So, um, and Bill, do you have a copy? Handy? I, I do. I, I'm opening it up right now, Gabe. Thanks. Okay, great. Um, I just don't, uh, I'll screen share in a sec uh, for something related, but for the main part. Um, so if I recall from the last meeting, I think the two main things you guys wanted me to do a little bit more on was to uh, pull a definition for ATM um, and then, you know, sort of pull an animal kennel definition. 
Uh, so, if, so first, let's look at the definitions, and then in the use table, it's it's left blank right now. So we're gonna we should discuss like how to how to put them in the use table. Um, so for the ATM, it's pretty straightforward. Um, in the use table, it's clarified that, that like like you guys were discussing that I, I said separate from an existing commercial structure, which I think was in the spirit of what you guys were concerned about is sort of a, a new standalone ATM versus one, you know, if a, if a grocery store wants to put an ATM out front or inside, that shouldn't be a thing. But, you know, if, if a property owner has like a parking lot and wants to put a, like a kiosk in it, that's like its own, that's a new use. Um, but in the definition, sure. yeah. yeah, in the definition, Definitions, I just say uh, a physical machine used to perform banking functions, including or not limited to cash or check deposits, cash withdrawals, automate, audit, account balance inquiry, account transfer transactions, or customer service inquiries. This machine acts as an automated version of a human bank teller. And uh, so, I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, and then, like I said, I think it, I think the it was more important to get it in the in the use table that we're talking about like a separate use a new use um it's helpful to have the definition but you know i think this could go into any sort of commercial building like we discussed and then um where did i put oh here's and then animal kennel is the other one i pulled um i forgot it came before atm um, so I have a lot with structures or pens in which three or more dogs, cats, or other household pets are boarded, bred, or sold. Um, and so that would basically mean, you know, that could that could be, you know, referring to either a commercial use or a personal use if someone is building a structure for multiple animals, um, you know, specifically dog, cats, household pets. Um, and then as you'll see in the use table, um, I have two separate lines for outdoor and indoor animal kennel. Cause like we discussed, there could easily be one that's like indoors at a, at a vet clinic. Um, you don't want to, you know, and if it's indoors, the noise is the main problem that that probably wouldn't really be a problem. Um, it's not that different from having household pets inside. Um, but then outdoors would be like the special use case. So um, moving to the use table, um, these are both in section five, which should be on page two um, of the use table. Uh, so they're T and W uh, in, in section five. And so uh, as you can see there, they should be highlighted in yellow. Um, I, I changed it to just automatic teller machine so that just to you know make it as sort of clinical as possible. Um, and then I said separate from pre-existing commercial structure, which again, I feel like is in spirit with what we, what your concern was. Um, and then those, those, uh, you know, the use, the, the uses are just based on the old, you know, what the current zoning is. So um, you have not allowed in a R40 and RSE and then permitted, um, you know, elsewhere. <clears throat> and then, um, Moving on to animal kennel. Um, so yeah, that's like the main thing is for animal kennel. I mean, we're gonna have to decide where we wanna allow it for indoor and outdoor. Did you see uh, in definitions of them where they headed on a certain size property? Like, I, I mean, you would want this on a quarter rate to walk, but you know, on right. a, whatever you, being member you pick. Yeah. You, I think that would be, I mean, that would, that would definitely be in line. I, I guess it's up to the planning board to decide what size parcel um, you want to prevent them on. And we could always, you know, I could always put in the definition if you guys want to, you know, add a sort of front, a special frontage for a kennel so that it's, you know, 20 feet back from the property line or something like that yeah. for like an out for an outdoor kennel. Yeah, it's only outdoor. I mean, indoor is a non-issue, really. It's just outdoor, you know. Yeah. A thousand house. acres, but if he puts it in the wrong spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's an issue his neighbor's yeah. house. So, yeah. 
maybe the appropriate things is x number of feet from the property line yeah <laughs> i agree but what's the appropriate and is it any less of annoyance at, at 30 feet than it is at 20 feet or I mean, you, would you go bigger than that well, i guess i mean i'm seeing just on a just on a quick google i'm seeing like 50 feet um 500 feet in a residential area um so it's, i think it's it's kind of up to the board um what you know because at a certain point if you're restricting it you know 500 feet you're basically limiting it to really big uh to really big lots and that might be appropriate for for residential area um is that something you'd, you'd want to put in an r40 or or you know rsc rsc maybe but r40 yeah RC, rc isn't the minimum square footage on rc is it thirty thousand? yeah yeah, if it's on sewer, I mean, yeah, no, nah, it's for 40, 40,000. So that would meet a 500 setback, that's yeah. for sure. Or maybe you just special 50 permit or 30. Where the board could use the well, discretion. Could that, that, that might be a way to handle it. You know? Yeah, use it as a case by case basis because each park property and, yeah. like, has its own, own unique features, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. but houses mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Correct. So. So you think make it a special permit? Outdoor. For outdoor. So I, I kind of jotted down special permit for, for A, R40, RSC, and N B. Um, okay. No in village. I mean that those are, those are yeah. Village. And then uh, site plan for C B and IG. Would that make sense? Or just yes. Does, uh, for B, P, and I, G? Um, uh, C, B. Oh, C, B, and I, G. Uh, C, B, I, G. Would, would we want to allow that in B, E, P? I mean, it's... I don't it's know about of, B, yeah. E, I, G, and C, B. I, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, just uh, site plan review for, for C, B, and I, G. And special permit for the uh, three residential zones and, and neighborhood business. Now, as a kennel operator, do you need a state license? I, I think this, uh, oh, I mean, I think this would allow us to sort of, if if uh, if there was someone who had like you know six dogs and wanted to keep them outside, you know, um, it's really more about the structure and the noise issue. Um, I'm sure there are license kennel licensing things. I know it's been an issue in Worcester where if you have you basically have to have it as a business if you own it. Like if, 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 if I had a house in Worcester and I had five dogs, it's some number. If you're over that number of dogs, it basically has to be a like commercial kennel, which I don't think really makes sense in Charlton for like, especially for like the agricultural district. Um, yeah, I don't think that's the intent. I'm sure there's people that have a few dogs, you know. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, um, I think the minimum is four, four dogs. And in the current definition, it's a minimum for three dogs. So if you wanted to have like a dog house for one or two dogs, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be subject to, to the planning board. But the only thing that's required is the animal officer has to inspect it on mm -hmm. a yearly basis. She had if, if, they, if, she know, if she's aware of it. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, the neighbor would let somebody know. Yeah. So, if you need a state license to run, I guess, for oversight as far as conditions of ability. Right. I'm not sure if yeah. the state, if you are really running a kennel, I'm not sure if there's a state requirement for okay. a license. All right. Um, so, I, I'm just well, anything that would be out there now would be pre-existing, non-conforming, and, right. and, and be allowed. Yeah. Yeah. Something can, um, so I next to rain around for indoor, outdoor special permits is better. Is indoor more more appropriate with a site plan? Well, I mean, they still got to take the dogs outside, right? If you have an indoor, they can't go well, out through their business. You're going to let them out to run or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But at least they're not out there all night or, or all day long, yeah. or, or yeah. they could be. Um, you want to do the, 
Because I mean, I think that uh, could be a special permit again, I guess. I don't know, depending on how many dogs they plan on having. And mm -hmm. I, I only look at in autumn, we own a, a commercial piece of property in a building, and uh, a proposed tenant wants to go in there, but they need a, to do a, a doggy daycare, but they need to get a special permit from the planning board. Mm. Oh, that just triggers in my head, and then I think of it. Right. Well, we got Barkwood in town. Correct. That was a special. Was that a special permit? Or was that just a regular site plan? Because I don't think it was a bylaw for uh, animal Probably kennels not. at that point. Yeah. Right. A site plan is a regular yeah. business. Correct. In CV. Yeah. Yeah. They're rated right on 20, so it's not bad. No. With the Barkwood. No. You know, that's yeah. not a big deal. Uh -huh. So is this uh, so uh, indoor? Is that something you even want to permit in an R forty? I mean, does that make sense to put that in an R forty? Or our, you know, be a home SE? Fall, fall in their home business. I guess if you're doing an R forty, it, it would. But if you're doing an inside kennel, mm. so if you allow an inside kennel, if you allow any kennel in any residential district, yeah, how do you make sure that there's enough room for parking to exactly. run the business? Yeah, so yeah. So better so, off uh -huh. doing it. Special it's each case board. by case basis because there's yeah. different size policies mm -hmm. around 40. No. So you want to keep indoor basically the same the same uh, regulations. Um, Sorry, Ross. Can you repeat yeah. that? Yeah, just keep it the same. Sorry, Gabe. Keep it the okay. same. Do you want yeah, do you want to keep it as two lines? So in the future, if you want to change it. Yeah, yeah. please. <clears throat> Okay, and then how do you want it treated in BEP? Uh, that's just going to be a no, right? For BEP. Yeah, I don't think that's what you want to allow in a business park. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Working for there, so. Um, and and the other no was for village. Did village, we say? Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's just... Yep. So I have it for SP and A, R40 and RSC and NB, a no in village, P and CB and IG, and a no in BEP. And that's for both outdoor and indoor kennels. So what, your definition of a kennel? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot with structures or pens in which three or more dogs, cats, or other household pets are boarded, bred, and or sold. So that wouldn't wouldn't necessarily cover a dog training facility or something like that. Is that even care uh, yeah, not not really. I mean, but I feel like in my experience, a lot of those places are usually also veterinary clinics and or kennels i mean my parents like you know they go to they have a dog training place they go and that's where they leave their dogs um and they have like everything there so i mean typically like in my you know I've, I've seen other kennels where usually they have these other services that would also be regulated by like you know veterinary clinic or just general commercial uses you have bylaws on the veterinary clinic mm -hmm. where they can go and everything yep we do have some larger lot village. Now, does village go all the way up? Ring for rent? Is that village or is that? Well, I, it's, somebody is, uh, we're going to hear it on the 23rd where somebody wants to rezone it from village to CB specifically to put a vet clinic on the top. Ring for rent. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Ring down, for rent. Yeah. Okay. Towards, uh, just, yeah, I wouldn't want to push anybody that's in that area now out. With these laws because i think there's some properties there that, that could handle that type of thing so yeah and i know there's a, a training facility next to rain for rent is that yeah that's where the, the vet clinic would be the next lot okay. over. Good. all right um so i think that's the main thing for tonight um i guess um i can start work on warrant language uh for for the uh for the meeting um the only other thing i wanted to show you guys so you were you were uh, interested in having like i'm going to screen share um i i mocked it up for a couple of the sections of the bylaws but you're interested in having sort of a guide 
a version like a guided version of the bylaws that show or the, of the of the use table that shows you know what the what for the existing uses uh what the revisions have been so i'll just show you how i have that mocked up right now um yeah, can you add that to this because it makes it it would make it a lot more user friendly for you know the people right. that that is even i have to go back page and look at like what you know yeah and again so what was it Okay. So do you guys see this? So I, I just have it for like the first couple of sections. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well. That's for informational at the town meeting to, yeah. to get that through. Yeah. Okay. So like here, I have a, you know, just like the prior symbol and then an arrow to the new one. Um, so I, I was, I, I mean, I'm going to put that together for the whole, for the whole use table, um, you know, for the board's use and also for the public. Um, so if that looks good, I can continue with that. And do you think you can have the that uh, ready by March twenty third? Oh yeah, okay. for sure. I'm sure, if you need the arrows or is it too busy, could you just do a strikeout? Yeah, yeah, that that would probably look better. With the the arrows is just, yeah. it might make it a little bit too busy, but a strikeout would would make it clear too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just make sure it's in the middle. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect way to do it. Cool. Yeah, looks good, Gabe. Thank you. The the warrant in color, so it would all be anyways. Yes. So, so something make strike it, out. Yeah, the strikeout would make I mean, it. Yeah, strikeouts. It would be useful at uh, the plane board. But on the warrant, it won't be it'll be all black and white. Yeah. So the strikeout would, would do with the, the yeah. two different colors. With um, would you want new uses since it won't be in since it'll be in black and white? Do you want me to like italicize the new uses we're introducing? Uh, yeah, yeah, or bold. Or... Yeah, or bo yeah, bold. Bold would probably look make more sense. Yeah, that way it'd be it, it'll pop. Yeah. Even maybe put the word new just right in the front of it, maybe, Gabe. Yeah. I'm just wondering how this is going to look when it goes through a, yeah. a copy machine. So, yeah, just <laughs> For sure. Yeah. For sure. It may blur something out. Yeah. <laughs> it would, it would, it would come up black. Perfect. Thanks, Gabe. I yeah, think. no problem. Uh, your next meeting is the 16th? No, it's the 23rd. 23rd. Um, okay. The, what uh, I'm trying to do is, uh, you know, the board has to discuss it tonight. Is we're trying to have a public hearing possibly on April 6th. So okay. Paper, I got to have this in my hand by the 23rd, you know, because once it's noticed in the paper. Yeah, uh, yeah for sure. Yeah, that can I can do that. Mr. Chair, go right ahead, please. Did, did you guys consider um, adding battery storage to CB I, as a special permit? Did, uh, discuss that, didn't we? we discussed it, but I'm not sure that we made the, the change. Um, there might be something. I think that might have been when Ron was working on it. Yeah. Um, battery storage. Yeah, there's nothing about battery in there right now. Uh, energy storage system or something to that effect. That's how they list battery. Yeah. Yeah, commercial energy storage and residential energy storage. Um, it's W and X of section six. Um, currently, commercial is not permitted anywhere except for uh, IG and BEP, and then residential energy storage is allowed by right everywhere except IG and BEP. I guess I'd like to renew my request to add CD, um, yeah, CD. special permit. Well, yeah, from, a, the, from the last page, it says emergency backup facility with less than or equal to 30 megawatts of power output. And it's uh, allowed in all all districts. 
Those are accessories, I think, John, right? So I thought we accessories. were talking like if somebody built a building and they wanted to put a power plant, you know, emergency okay. battery. Okay, gotcha. Be, yes. Be associated right. with that. All right, yep. So it, you, as it stands now, say you built a building, it wouldn't be a standalone, but if you built it like it, yeah. Well, that would be for that one building's use. I'm talking with everything that's going on with solar and the grid and what they're trying to do for upgrades, they're trying to do standalone battery storage. Mm -hmm. And I know you've allowed it. Zones, I think it can fit in the CV zone on certain parcels with a special permit. And right now, straight no. So I ask that you, that you, that you consider making that a, a special permit in the CV zone. Yeah, I mean, with a special permit, we could wrap some rules around it, some requirements. Well, if the lot fit. Slate specific. Yeah. And again, you're not talking about 20 acres of battery storage. You can fit. It's a small storage container on, on a half an acre. It, I mean, it mainly affects properties that front on 20 and maybe it's a setback into the property. You don't have to look at them or they're What's buffered the, or whatever you come up yeah, with. The, some the, type of screening. The, there's quite a bit of CB along Route 169 that is very well, tough that, to develop yeah, because that, of the that proximity to Caden Brook. It's mm -hmm. where something like this could work and bring in. I think these are going to bring in good revenue for the community, much like solar does. It's, it's only going to be on the main roads. It won't be on, you know, feed that primarily where CB is. So, yeah, there's done a special permit, you know, <clears throat> looking at property specific. Some properties that will work, some properties that won't. So, so are we talking about adding a new use or are we talking about modifying one of these three? Uh, like either the emergency power backup or the commercial or residential energy storage. We added the CB district. We added as a special permit. Section six, number W. Okay. I mean, that would fuel cell be covered under commercial storage or that's commercial generating. If, if, if I mean, that's the next kind of way things are going. Well, I think you'll so, so, you know, it's a, it's like the solar fields where they put the big batteries that look like a, you know, a box, a trailer yeah. box or a trailer truck. Yeah. It's basically, you know, they put a bunch of them together. And okay. Well, I'll change that to, I'll change that to SP. That makes sense. If the so, board wants to keep going with that. Uh, I don't, yeah. I don't have any. Uh, it's not it's special, special, it's not special for to see these as well. Thank you. John and Jean, you guys fine with that? Being a special permit? Yeah. Okay. John's still thinking. Anything else? Yeah. Another <laughs> follow question. Yeah. Village district. Yep. Much like yeah. the yeah. go for a variance for that 25 foot setback. Was yeah. there any further discussion about making that 25 foot setback? way if the lot is over a certain size. So if you have an acre and a half, 60,000 square foot lot, you don't have to just cram the building within 25 feet of the main road and have an acre of land. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's something we talked about uh, a while back when the, the mushroom farm wanted to yeah. go in. Um, and it was a, uh, but the way that it had been was, you know, the building 25 feet from the road, which seemed odd. Um, is that to get, was it, when it was first designed, was the intent to have that village the feel, area, you know. Uh, all of the... Personally, I think it's, it's you're, you're forcing something that it's never going to be anyways. That's for a you know, it, it's, it was, I mean, if, it was a good pipe dream, but I, I, I would think it. Think. I think the dream would be just looking at this this whole lot of land here <clears> that <throat> runs behind your the property in the village district. If somebody was to buy that and put a, a road in and have commute, just storefronts yeah. and like a little village district so i think that the the idea was like if it ever came to chowton that's what we want it to look like we just don't want to have a free-for-all we want to have a kind of a trendy downtown look not trendy right yeah with buildings close to each other and such i think when village was sold it was sold that the existing lots would be more usable to the owners where they could repurpose and redevelop them mm -hmm. into that and that would get us the village field on the village feel on our existing roads. Our original. So North Main Street, Main Street, and Sonic Home Road, that's where Alan focused the village mm -hmm. to kind of this is our village district. 
if you're going to redevelop, let's redevelop and make it work there. And I think that, again, a 25 foot set, maximum setback must have come from another community that used it to, to make it work. And, and some of those houses fit that. Uh, Already there. The okay. smaller lots, so also, but, but now the same footprint of what would work. Now they could reuse those as mixed use or as yeah. commercial, where before they couldn't because it was R40. As far as the Miller property and someone developing that because it's village, it's you know the, the larger parcels like that that are village are, are kind of a little confusing. Just like the Masonic Home property that that the town bought that's 30 acres in this village. Mm -hmm. the, 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 what you can do there is is kind of when, if you if you put your own road in, then it's great. You yeah. can stay within 25 feet of it. But if you don't want to subdivide it and do all that and use the property you're stuck being within 20 unless you go for a variance which the town was able to get but like um on north main street we we bought a piece of property and we separate subdivided it from the house so there's 60,000 square feet and it has frontage on north main street and um h putnam road that pmp came in for a site plan i don't know if, it, if that was ever finalized no, never, fi never submitted it was never submitted no but part of their problem is they have 60,000 square feet with quite a bit of land but when they propose doing their buildings, they have to be within 25 feet of the road and they have a, you know an acre yeah. of land in between the two buildings, yeah. which That's what happened mm -hmm. is the buildings out on the edges, but the middle of the property was vacant because the buildings had to be out on the edges. So it was a but I, I don't know if there's like a magic number of 40,000 square feet where if you hit that number, that, that 25 foot setback goes away and, and it makes the parcel more user friendly. But then it kind of takes it away from that village feel. Well, okay. that's what people want. I, well, yes. I think so. I'm getting back to why we're doing this is that this will be done, and then we can go on to tackle what the master plan is mm. okay. and, and take it to the next. It's like maybe when we do the master plan, we'll say, to your point, that's totally ridiculous to have it that way okay. and manipulate it to at least we have a firm set of rules to go by and usage table to go by and that would have us have a discussion on you know going another step further and seeing what these these properties in that village just to try to look like so it's not like we're not that i don't think my intent is like we're not trying to keep the things the village district or or these areas we are you know we're, we're cutting them up ripping them out but it it leads to another discussion about how the child Developed in the master plan, which needs to be updated. Yeah, yeah. I just wasn't sure if this one zoning. No, I was going to do one the apple. No, and try, no. try and get no. as much done. And then no, this is the big move to define stuff, and then the master plan to figure out where we're going. Everybody come in with the master plan and say, hey, you know, it's like this is just then this is we why is that like that? Understood, you know. Yeah. Is, is yes, that, I am, am I? No. <laughs> is going to on that? Well, it is going to. So the zoning bylaw will continue to evolve. Yes. yes. As, okay. as it needs to. It's just yeah, it needs to evolve historically, it's going. This yeah. is the zoning and this is set. No. And, yeah. and it's hard to, to, again, have it change or evolve every five years. And we just. To your point, it, it's not some of the, the original master plan or what they. They, they define or Alan defined 20. It's no longer relevant. Right. The terms are no longer. Because it has to We had to update the it terms in this. Okay. And we need to, okay, this is where we are now. So let's, with the knowledge moving forward with the new development into town, let's, mm -hmm. let's re, yeah. redo our plan. And, and then to your point, to, okay, let's do this differently. So. Yeah. And, and we've had a lot of people come and try to, you know, it's like, we're getting our zoning. We're, we're doing, you know, everybody petitions to eat. So we're we're taking that into account, like trying to neaten up the Route 20 corridor mm -hmm. or the community business. But in the same token, leave it like leave it at a point where it's like, okay, now we've got our rules, we've got our regulations, the definitions. Let's talk about the master plan and, and go at it and, and move forward. So understood. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. No problem. Well, Right, Gabe, thank well, you uh, yeah, thank you guys. Um, and I will, uh, you know, get that stuff ready for the 23rd. I'll see you then. I can come back to the master plan discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably. <laughs> okay.
All right. Have a good night. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Gabe. All right. Next up, we don't have any living minutes or not? Uh, no, the only thing is saying, um, I, one thing I did yeah, do yeah, that's totally in light of the fact that I just want to go to the no, 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 this was, you know, I made a draft, never going to touch it again. I just want to make sure that everybody's okay with it as far as um, because times of wasting that to have a public hearing for the uh, by law revisions <laughs> Sorry. That was, on April. I wanted to read them all. Yeah. We get it done for the warrant. After the first one, you could go yep. quick. We're doing the, uh, at this point, it's the definitions in the use table. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Do you want to post, um, once we get the documents, you want to post them on the website? So yeah, well, that's why I was trying to get them because I have to get them by the 23rd in order to meet. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if people want to see them, we can put them on the website. So as soon as they have them, I'll post them so that everybody can read them. Right. And maybe Andrew or somebody that's on the town Facebook page can put it out there. Yeah. Is there anything else you have? Um, free COVID test for everyone. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and chocolate. Wow, this is great. <laughs> what more could you ask for? <laughs> No, I, I said, That's exactly I, why I do it. Just yeah, I don't know how they did it, but the town um, gave uh, everybody gets two. Yes. Yeah. If they want more, they can come. Through, yeah, the, the, the town was given to all employees and all um, board and commission members. Isn't that upstairs? That's all they do. They do. Thanks for picking those up, James. Yeah, thanks, James. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Y'all got it. Except my wife that works in the town. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> giving everyone two free COVID tests, but you have to stop by to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, sure. <clears throat> She's been through a lot of treatment. She's probably in for a So I just want to make sure to... that everybody's yeah. okay with me posting the notice for yep. the public hearing. Yep, yep. absolutely. Yep. So yes. that I've already, you know, it's already a placeholder on the warrant as well as uh, Pete's property and the, the one other one they want to do one on Trolley Crossing. Yeah. So those would be the three on the warrant for the planning board. So we got a public hearing for those in the beginning. April, so you said. Yeah, well, yeah. Act, yeah. yeah. Next week. the first one's going to be the 23rd, the one I'm probably next week. So yeah. We'll have uh, Peters and the bylaw so, on the uh, 6th of April. Perfect. Good to have a bet in town. Yes. Oh, no. it's already one. Yeah, we got one. We have two. Oh, that's right. There's uh, Road. Yeah. I think it's actually one of the existing ones. They want to move over there so they can more centrally locate. She works. She's across the street. The mobile one. That one is the one in the building. Yeah. Yeah, she's on the North Main Street. Oh, is that the one that runs the building? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, she's cool. All right, if no one has anything else, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Bill Fontaine. Aye. Yeah. See aye. All right. Thank you very Thanks, much. Guys. See you. Godzilla. Godzilla coming. <laughs> <laughs>